is story time. And uh, more than kids, I guess. So. <laughs> Come up front. That's what we had in those days. 
along with black and white televisions if you were lucky enough to own one, which we didn't. But anyway, I could take that enlarger and put a negative in it underneath where the light was, and I could shine it down on this easel type apparatus on the bottom and decide by cranking it up and down what I wanted to show in that picture. And then when I had it just the way I wanted it, I could get out of that little box that you told me I could use, special photosensitive paper, and put it underneath there. And then I could turn that light on that shone through the negative onto the paper for just a few seconds, turn it off, and then I would start a process of putting it into, I think he called it hypo, it was the first bath solution, and then I would watch in that dim light as the picture would develop. And when I thought it was developed just right, I would move it over to another bath solution. And that stopped the process. And then after that, I moved it over to another solution, which was basically water, which was a bath. Then I could turn the light on and see what I had done. Now, if you didn't leave it in the wash long enough, your photos would fade. And I soon found that out because I was sometimes impatient to see my product in in the daylight. So, as individuals, we can't always be in the sunshine. Sometimes God has to take us into the dark room and experience, the dark room experience. And sometimes he draws a curtain between us and the sun. Clouds gather, and they seem to shut out the light. And as a photographer knows just how much light is needed when he exposes a picture, and how much darkness is needed when he develops it, so God knows when we need the darkness of trial and testing. He sees in us something of beauty, which he wishes to develop. Now, it may be a feature of his own loveliness, which could be brought out in the dark room. If the dark room brings out the detail and the beauty of our lives, Shall we complain if now and then God withdraws the sunlight and takes us into his dark room? I have a poem I'm going to read that was written by Mrs. C. W. Star. I learned as the years roll onward and leaves the past behind that much that I count as sorrow but proves that God is kind. The clouds that cover the sunshine, and they cannot banish the sun, and the earth shines all the brighter when the weary rain is gone. We must live through a weary winter if we value the spring, and the woods must be cold and silent before the robins sing. The flowers must be buried in darkness before they bud and bloom. And the sweetest and warmest sunshine comes after the storm and gloom. We must stand in the deepest sorrow to see the clearest light. And often from Ron's own darkness, comes the very strength of right. Peter writes in 1 Peter 4, 12, 
We love, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials which might try you as though some strange thing happens to you. Surprised, painful surprises can come in many ways. Maybe it's your parents having trouble in your marriage. Maybe it's a car that drives in front of you and causes an accident. Maybe it's a loss of a job for adults or a betrayal of someone that you thought loved you. As bad as the pain can be, it's always made worse by the element of surprise. And what Peter is trying to tell us is not to fall into the trap of believing that fiery ordeals and trials are alien to the Christian experience. Rather, they're consider considered normal. They can and they should be expected. Sometimes walking with God can be challenging and hard. Job, in the midst of his suffering, asked God, why do the wicked live on, growing old and increasing in power? Ellen White writes in the Ministry of Healings, page 471, the fact that we're called on to endure trials shows that the Lord Jesus sees in us something precious that he wishes to develop. If he saw in us nothing, whereby he might glorify his name, he would not spend the time refining us. He does not cast worthless stones into the furnace. It's the valuable ore that he refines. The blacksmith puts iron and steel into the furnace that he may know what metal they are. The Lord allows his chosen ones to be placed in the furnace of affliction to prove what temper they are of and whether they can be fashioned for his work. Peter finishes his statement in chapter 4, verse 13. Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings that when His glory is revealed, you may be also glad with exceeding joy. Anybody want to pray? Okay, go so on, let's. Precious Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on these precious children that they will be, be tried and found to be worthy of your love and worthy of your service, Lord. We pray that you will be with them and guide them. In your son's precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen.